Good morning, brethren, sisters, Church of the Living God. Hello. Um, bow your head with me and let's pray before we get to this, okay? Bow your head. Lord, may, we, may you redeem your purchased possession soon. May you redeem us, Lord. May you redeem those whom you have purchased with your own blood. Lord, may we as your church, the church of the living God, your body, ever submit ourselves unto the truth of the scriptures and be submissive unto you, Lord, to go as you would have us to be guided and lead us, Lord. Lord, there is a sister whose family is going through incredible suffering right now through, infect through infection. Lord, may you touch that sister's family. May you lead them and guide them and provide for them endlessly and protect them, Lord, and keep them. Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, our brother in Spain, May you lead him and guide him. May you heal him today. May you provide for him what is needful to recover, that you may be glorified, Lord. And all of the other brethren and sisters out there, Lord, who are going through so much right now. You can furnish a table in the wilderness, Lord. And there is nothing impossible with you. Lord, let us not be distracted by these wiles of the devil, but let us ever keep our eyes focused upon you. And may our faith be encouraged and strengthened this day. And all the brethren that are going through so, <laughs> going through so many family problems, health problems, even so come Lord Jesus. And Lord, um, this that you have given today, speak unto your people. Speak unto this congregation, Lord. Instruct them. Teach them. Admonish, rebuke, exhort, encourage, Lord, through your word, the scriptures. Lord, may we have eyes to see, ears to hear, and understanding hearts. May we be given these things, Lord, that we may behold wondrous things out of thy law. And may we ever seek to uh, cleanse our way by taking heed thereto according to thy word. May we have your blessings today. And in Jesus Christ's name, God's people said, Amen. We're praying for you, sister. Well, brethren, this is probably, um, this is, um, I think this will be a very interesting video for, for those of you. Uh, it was very interesting on me um, to, to be led into this and to do this, as you will see by the title of this video. We're going to be doing an expository video here, a study of Psalm 122. And um, the Lord just showed, has shown so many beautiful things about this. And um, so hopefully, hopefully, um, hopefully he will show unto you what he showed unto me, your servant. Okay. But let us let us dive right into this. Um, you have often, I'm I'm guessing, as the Church of the Living God, you have often my, may have prayed for the peace in Jerusalem, right? Let's say it the scriptures about this. Now, for this video, of course, using two sets of scriptures. Uh, you, I, I'm going to speak to you 
as if you are following along in the scriptures, okay? You are expected to follow along in the scriptures, okay? Psalm 122. We're going to begin by reading verses 1 and 2, okay? Psalm 122. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Now very quickly, Psalm 122, the heading here, if, if it's in your set of scriptures, it says, A Song of Degrees of David. Question! Was the temple built during the time of David? No, and, and we will look at that. So when he, when he says right here, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. What is this house of the Lord? Turn in your authorized version of the scriptures. You are expected to. <laughs> Gonna have to. <laughs> okay. So Jeremiah chapter 31. Jeremiah chapter 31. Verses 1 on to verse 9. Psalm 122, verse 1. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Jeremiah 31, verses 1 on to verse 9. At the same time, saith the Lord, will I be the God of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. Thus saith the Lord, the people which were left of the sword found grace in the wilderness, even Israel, when I went to cause him to rest. Now very quickly, look at verse 1, where he says, At the same time, saith the Lord, Will I be the God of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. When you are of someone's house, all right, of the house of David, that means that you are in relation unto him, okay? If you are of the house of Brad, okay, that means that you are of relation unto them, okay? So, being of the house of the Lord Meaning what? That they are the Lord's people. Because remember, brethren, the temple during the reign of King David, the temple was not built yet. And don't worry, we're going to see the proof of that in Scripture. Okay? Let's continue. Picking up at verse 2 again. Thus saith the Lord, the people which were left of the sword found grace in the wilderness, even Israel, when I went to cause him to rest. The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Again, I will build thee, and thou shalt be built, O virgin of Israel. Thou shalt again be adorned with thy tabrets, and shalt go forth in the dances of them that make merry. And that's M-E-R-R-Y, by the way. <laughs> Thou shalt yet plant vines upon the mountains of Samaria. The planters shall plant, and shall eat them as common things. For there shall be a day that the watchman upon the Mount Ephraim shall cry, Arise ye, let us go up to Zion, unto the Lord our God. For thus saith the Lord, Sing with gladness for Jacob, and shout among the chief of the nations, Publish ye, praise ye, and say, O Lord, save thy people, the remnant of Israel. Behold, I will bring them from the north country, and gather them from the coasts of the earth, and with them the blind and the lame, the woman with child, and her that travaileth with child together. A great company shall return thither. Talking about also the future restoration of Israel, okay? 
Okay, talking about the north country bringing them back from captivity, which they did, which the Lord did, and Ezra and Nehemiah. Okay, yes, but also there is a future fulfillment here being addressed. Okay, keep that in mind. They shall come with weeping. Where in verse 9? They shall come with weeping, and with supplications will I lead them. I will cause them to walk by the rivers of waters in a straight way. For straight is the gate, and narrow is the way that leads unto life. And few be there that find it. Wherein they shall not stumble, for I am a father to Israel. And Ephraim is my firstborn. So when you go to Psalm 122, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. The house of the Lord. Okay, remember, the temple was not built. They had the tabernacle. Okay, they had the tabernacle. So going into the house of the Lord, the people, the people of Israel are of the house of the Lord. The apple of his eye, okay? They are his chosen people. Israel is God's chosen people to this very day, okay? He chose Israel, okay? Yes, our Lord God, our Father, Jesus Christ is a God who chooses, okay? And never mind that ridiculous argument of Calvinism, okay? No, he chose Israel. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go unto Israel. Go into the house of the Lord, okay? The tabernacle, but as God's people. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. O Jerusalem. Exodus chapter 20. Exodus chapter 20. We're going to just look at one verse here. Exodus chapter 20, if my fingers can get there. <laughs> Exodus chapter 20, verse... 24. Exodus chapter 20, verse 24. For verse 2. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Exodus 20, verse 24. Pause the video as you need to to catch up. An altar of earth thou shalt make unto me, and shalt sacrifice thereon thy burnt offerings, and thy peace offerings, thy sheep and thine oxen, in all places where I record my name, places, well, in all places where I record my name, I will come unto thee and will bless thee and will bless thee. Where I record my name, all places, okay? His name in the Old Testament, definitely, because the Jew is the apple of his eye, okay? His name was what? Recorded on, upon the children of Israel, but also First Chronicle, uh, Second Chronicles, chapter six. Second Chronicles, chapter six. Second Chronicles, chapter six, verses one on to verse six. This is King Solomon, Solomon, son of peace. Second Chronicles, chapter six, verses one on to verse six. Then said Solomon, the Lord has said that he would dwell in the thick darkness, but I have built an house of habitation for thee and a place for thy dwelling forever. And the king turned his face and blessed the whole congregation of Israel and all the congregation of Israel stood. And he said, blessed be the Lord God of Israel who hath with his hands fulfilled that which he spake with his mouth to my father David, saying, Since the day that I brought forth my people out of the land of Egypt, I chose no city among all the tribes of Israel to build an house in, that my name might be there. Neither chose I any man to be ruler over my people Israel, but I have chosen Jerusalem, Jerusalem. What does Jerusalem mean, by the way? Flowing peace. Jerusalem is regarded as a land that floweth with milk and honey. A land where peace flows. Interesting, huh? 
Jeru, flow, shalom, Salem, peace. Jerusalem. <clears throat> but I have chosen Jerusalem, verse 6, that my name might be there, and have chosen David to be over my people Israel. David. And of course, Solomon is the son of David. Okay? Okay? Verse 2 in Psalm 122, Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. So the people of the house of the Lord, the people of Israel, and right here he says in verse 2 in 2 Chronicles chapter 6, But I have built an house of habitation for thee, and a place for thy dwelling forever. His name is forever linked to Jerusalem. Flowing peace. Okay, so his people, where it says here, going into the house of the Lord, okay, and back then, when it was just David as king, not Solomon, there was no temple built, okay, so they would go into the tabernacle as the people of the Lord, okay, very interesting, very interesting. Now, let us read verses 3 on to verse 4. Jerusalem in Psalm 122. Jerusalem is builded as a city that is compact together. Whither the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, unto the testimony of Israel, to give thanks unto the name of the Lord. Jerusalem, flowing peace, is builded as a city that is compact together. First Chronicles chapter 12. Thank you. <laughs> First Chronicles chapter 12. Compact together. Now, if we were to read, and we're not going to read this because we've got quite a few scriptures to go through today. But if we were to read verses 23 all the way to verse 40, we would see what? All Israel come together to make David king. Okay? Okay. Let's look at verse 23 in 1 Chronicles chapter 22. Or excuse me, yes, verse 23. And these are the numbers of the bands that were ready armed to the war and came to David to Hebron to turn the kingdom of Saul to him according to the word of the Lord. And then if we were to read, we would see that all 12 of the tribes of Israel are accounted for to turn the kingdom over onto David as appointed by our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay? And we can see also in verse 38, in 1 Chronicles chapter 12, all these men of war that could keep rank came with a perfect heart to Hebron to make David king over all Israel. And all the rest also of Israel were of one heart to make David king. Okay? Jerusalem, flowing peace, is a city, is builded as a city that is compact together. Now they came to Hebron, but of course as we know that King David and it was established as king, his throne in Jerusalem. He reigned 33 years in Jerusalem and what? Seven years in Hebron, okay? 33 years in Jerusalem, seven years in Hebron, okay? Jerusalem is the city of the what? The great king, okay? Yes, yes. Compact together. All Israel were of one heart, compact together to make David their king. Psalm 133. Psalm 133. Of all we're going to be looking at today, hopefully we can get through Psalm 133 in its entirety. Hopefully. Hopefully. It's a little sarcasm, obviously. Psalm 133. Behold, 
how good and how pleasant it, it, it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard that went down to the skirts of his garments, as the dew of Hermon, and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion. For there... The Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. Mount Zion, Zion, Jerusalem, okay? For the deliverer shall come out of Zion, okay? Mount Zion, Jerusalem, okay? Synonymous therewith, flowing peace, okay? For there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. Jerusalem, uh, Psalm 122, verse 3 again. Jerusalem is built as a city that is compact together. Verse 4. Whither the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, unto the testimony of Israel, to give thanks unto the name of the Lord. The tribes of the Lord. What are the tribes of the Lord? Now, that this ought to be pretty simple to Get. What are the who? What is this? What does this say? Whether the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. What are the tribes of the Lord? Okay, go to Deuteronomy chapter four. Deuteronomy chapter four, the second law, giving of the second law. Deuteronomy chapter four. Deuteronomy chapter. Oh, no, no, no. I'm going out of uh, sequence here. Deuteronomy chapter 12. Deuteronomy chapter 12, verses 1 on to verse 12. Deuteronomy chapter 12, verses 1 on to verse 12. Then we'll go back to <laughs> Deuteronomy chapter 4, okay? Deuteronomy chapter 12. Sorry about that. Verses 1 on to verse 12. These are the statutes and judgments which ye shall observe to do in the land, which the Lord God of thy fathers giveth thee to possess it. All the days that ye live upon the earth, ye shall utterly destroy all the places wherein the nations which ye shall possess serve their gods upon the high mountains and upon the hills and under every green tree. And ye shall overthrow their altars and break their pillars and burn their groves with fire. And ye shall hew down the graven images of their gods and destroy the names of them out of that place. Ye shall not do so unto the Lord your God, but unto the place which the Lord your God shall choose out of all your tribes, the twelve tribes of Israel, to put his name there, even unto his habitation shall ye seek, and thither thou, thither thou, thou shalt come. Thank you, part. And thither ye shall bring your burnt offerings, and your sacrifices, and your tithes, and heave offerings of your hand, and your vows and your freewill offerings, and the firstlings of your herds and of your flocks. And there ye shall eat before the Lord your God, and ye shall rejoice in all that ye put your hand unto, ye and your households, wherein the Lord thy God hath blessed thee. Ye shall not do after all the things that we do here this day, Every man whatsoever is right in his own eyes, as they did in parts of the book of Judges, by the way. For ye are not yet come to the rest and to the inheritance which the Lord your God giveth you. But when ye go over Jordan and dwell in the land which the Lord your God giveth you to inherit, and when he giveth you rest from all your enemies round about, so that ye dwell in safety. Hold up. Look at that verse. But when ye go over Jordan and dwell in the land which the Lord your God giveth you to inherit, and when he giveth you rest from all your enemies round about, so that ye dwell in safety. Question. Today, Israel as a nation, do they have rest all round about them from their enemies? Do they dwell safely today in Israel?
Verse 11. Then there shall be a place which the Lord your God shall choose to cause his name to dwell there. Thither shall ye bring all that I command you, your burnt offerings and your sacrifices, your tithes and the heave offering of your hand, and all your choice vows which ye vow unto the Lord. And ye shall rejoice before the Lord your God, ye and your sons and your daughters and your men servants and your maid servants and the Levite that is within your gates, for as much as he hath no part nor inheritance with you. So when it says here in verse 4, whether the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, he's talking about the 12 tribes of Israel, obviously. The 12 tribes of Israel, the apple of his eye. Okay, not the, the tribes of all the nations of the earth. No, the 12 tribes of Israel. Now go back to Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 5 on to verse 8. Deuteronomy 4, verses 5 on to verse 8. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me, that ye should do, that ye should do so in the land whither ye go to possess it. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and understanding in the sight of the nations which shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation, the nation of Israel, is a wise and understanding people. Wisdom, fear the Lord, understanding to depart from Israel. The law was given unto who? Israel. Okay? So the tribes of the Lord, right here in verse 4 in Psalm 122, it's the tribes of Israel, the 12 tribes of Israel, okay? We get this, right, brother, sister? Yeah, we, we know this. You know that the state that we are in right now, this time, the last days, you know that there are people out there boom, that like to dispute, uh, dispute that. So we're, we're, trying, uh, we're trying to get rid of all arguments about the tribes of the Lord there. 12 tribes of Israel. Okay, let's continue though. Verse 7. For what nation, the nation of Israel, is there so great, who hath God so nigh unto them, as the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him for? And what nation is there so great, that hath statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law, which I set before you, the Jews, Israel, this day. Verse 9. Only take heed to thyself, and keep thy soul diligently, lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, because the Jews require a sign, and lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life, but let the Jesuits teach your son. Excuse me. But teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons. Let's read verse 10. Let's read verse 10. Can you handle that? Especially the day that thou stoodest before the Lord thy God in Horeb, when the Lord said unto me, Gather me the people together, and I will make them hear my words that they may learn to fear me all the days that they shall live upon the earth, and that they may teach their children. You know that video, a, a little rabbit trail here. I, I love rabbit. I love rabbit with the hot sauce and teriyaki. Ooh, ooh, very good. But you know that video about the college scam that uh, I put on the channel here? I had not seen that for a while. And thank you, sister, pointed out... Um, the, there was a Catholic key that came right out. I, I, I hadn't uh, remembered that. I hadn't seen that for a while. But um, who's supposed to teach the children? Yeah. Daddy and mommy are supposed to teach the children. 
not Jesuits. So, okay, have we established pretty good that, yes, the verse 4, whether the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord unto the testimony of Israel to give thanks unto the name of the Lord forever, the testimony of Israel, the testimony that they had all these laws and statutes. What does it say? Verse 7, for what nation is there so great who hath God so nigh unto them as the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him for? Testimony unto Israel that they had God so nigh unto them. They were of God's house. See, tying in with verse 1. See? Now verse 5. Verse 5. For there are set thrones, plural, of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Set thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Go to Judges. Judges. Judges chapter 8. Judges chapter 8, we're going to read two verses. Or uh, we're going to read verses, what is this? 22 under verse 23. Beg your pardon. In Judges chapter 8. Judges chapter 8, verses 22 under verse 23. Then the men of Israel said unto Gideon, Rule thou over us, both thou and thy son." and thy son's son also, for thou hast delivered us from the hand of Midian. So the people of Israel wanted to make Gideon their king, to have him rule over them. Okay? Look at Gideon's response. And Gideon said unto them, I will not rule over you, neither shall my son rule over you. The Lord shall rule over you. The Lord shall rule over you. Who is the Lord? Jesus Christ. God. The Father. Okay? The Lord. Look at that. The Lord shall rule over you. Okay? First Samuel. First Samuel chapter 8. 1 Samuel chapter 8, verses 6 on to verse 9. Uh, actually, actually, let's get, okay, let's get, a, let's get a better context. Verses 1 on to verse 9 in uh, 1 Samuel chapter 8, okay? This is an expository video. There's supposed to be a lot of scripture, Okay? Piecemeal this, if you want. And it came to pass when Samuel was old, uh, 1 Samuel chapter 8, verses 1 and verse 9. Right? Verse 9? Yes. And it came to pass when Samuel was old, that he made his sons judges over Israel. Remember, Samuel was a prophet, a priest, and also a judge, not a king. Now the name of the firstborn was Joel. And the name of his second, Abiah. They were judges in Beersheba. And his sons walked not in his ways, but turned aside after lucre, money, and took bribes and perverted judgment. Then all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together and came to Samuel unto Ramah. Beg your pardon. And said unto him, Behold, thou art old. And thy sons walk in thy and thy sons walk not in thy ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. Now this is talked about in Deuteronomy. Okay, I, I believe it's uh, Deuteronomy chapter 17-ish, somewhere in there, okay? But look at that. Make us a king. A man, okay? A man. 
make us a king to judge us like all the nations. And we have already looked at Deuteronomy chapter 4. Okay? Okay? The Lord is their king. But what does it say? They wanted to have a king, a man, judge them just like all the other nations. And we looked in Deuteronomy chapter 4. The Lord took Israel out to be separate, other than, different, holy. And to instruct us in righteousness, <laughs> when the Lord saves you, he will change your life, not at gunpoint, but he will change your life so that as his ambassador, you know, you, you align your life with the scriptures. <laughs> your life will be separate than, other than, holy, separate, different. See, God has called us out of Egypt, the world, and has saved us by his blood, the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay? We've come to him broken and contrite and believed on him and in our brokenness, our fear, our contrition, our sorrow. We called out unto him. The Lord saved us. Okay? He changes our lives. Not at gunpoint. That we may be separate, different, other. But yet we see here, they wanted a king to be just like all the other nations. Verse 6, but the thing displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Samuel, now this is talked about in Deuteronomy, okay? The Lord saw this coming, obviously. <laughs> All the way back in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, okay? You look that up on your own time, okay? And the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people and all that they say unto thee. For they have not rejected thee. But they have rejected me that I should not reign over them. And also too, brethren, keep that in mind when you are being persecuted by your own family. And you are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God. It's not you that your family detests. It's the Lord. Don't forget that, brother, sister. Verse 8. According to all the works which they have done since the day that I brought them up out of Egypt, even unto this day, Wherewith they have forsaken me and served other gods, so do they also unto thee. Now therefore hearken unto their voice. Grant them their request. Howbeit, yet protest solemnly unto them, and shew them the manner of the king that shall reign over them. Lord is their king. He was their king, but see... They didn't want that. They wanted to have a man, something that they could see with their eyes because the Jews require a sign, remember? Okay? Okay? Now, 1 Samuel chapter 12. 1 Samuel chapter 12, verses 6 on to verse 15. 1 Samuel 12, verses 6 on to verse 15. And Samuel said unto the people, It is the Lord that advanced Moses and Aaron, and that brought your fathers up out of the land of Egypt. Now therefore stand still, that I may reason with you before the Lord of all the righteous acts of the Lord, which he did to you and to your fathers. When Jacob was come into Egypt, and your fathers cried unto the Lord, and the Lord sent Moses and Aaron, which brought forth your fathers out of Egypt and made them dwell in this place. 
And when they forget, when they forget the Lord their God, he sold them into the hand of Sisera, captain of the host of Hazor, and into the hand of the Philistines, and into the hand of the king of Moab, and they fought against them. And they cried unto the Lord, and said, We have sinned, because we have forsaken the Lord, and have served Balim and Ashtaroth. But now deliver us out of the hand of our enemies, and we will serve thee. And the Lord sent Jerabel, and Bedan, and Jephthah, and Samuel, and delivered you out of the hand of your enemies on every side, and ye dwelled safe. Take your pardon. And when ye saw that Nahash, the king of the children of Ammon, came against you, ye said unto me, Nay, but a king shall reign over us. You see that? When the Lord your God was your king. They wanted a man to take the place of the Lord. Oh, oh yeah, you're already getting the tie-ins, ain't you? Yeah, yeah. And the comparison in verse 11 and verse 12, or excuse me, in verse 10, on to verse 12, okay, the threat of Ammon, the children of Ammon from Nahash, was in no wise as severe as the ones of the uh, Philistines and of Moab and so on. And the Lord brought them out of that through a judge. But when it came to Ammon, the children of Ammon, they, uh, Nahash there, they finally, it's like, we want a king just like everybody else. Verse 13, Now therefore behold, the king whom ye have chosen, and whom ye have desired, and behold, the Lord hath set a king over you. If ye will fear the Lord and serve him, get a load of verse 14, this is crucial. If ye will fear the Lord and serve him, and obey his voice, and not rebel against the commandment of the Lord. Then shall both ye and also the king that reigneth over you continue following the Lord your God. But if ye will not obey the voice of the Lord, but rebel against the commandment of the Lord, then shall the hand of the Lord be against you as it was against your fathers. The Lord chose Samuel to be the first king. The Lord chose David, okay? And you see within the books of First and Second Kings, especially, that there were times when the people of Israel chose the king instead of going to the Lord. And look, that didn't really work out that well, okay? <laughs> okay? So they wanted a king when the Lord was their king. They wanted a man. They wanted a man to sit on a throne that they can look to. Oh, I know you're getting it, ain't you? Yeah, yeah, okay. Now, let's go to 2 Samuel chapter 7. 2 Samuel chapter 7. This is going to be a little bit tedious for you, but boo-hoo. Okay? 2 Samuel chapter 7 verses 5 on to verse 16. Uh, actually, let's read verses 4 on to verse 16. Okay? In 2 Samuel chapter 7. And it came to pass that night that the word of the Lord came unto Nathan, saying, Go and tell my servant David, Thus saith the Lord, Shalt thou build me an house for me to dwell in? Whereas I have not dwelt in any house since the time that I brought up the children of Israel out of Egypt, even to this day, but have walked in a tent and in a tabernacle. Now that, verse 6, is very telling for verse 1 in Psalm uh, 122. Okay? He walked in what? A tent and a and in a tabernacle. Okay? House of the Lord. But then again, the people of Israel chosen of the Lord, are of the Lord, the people of Israel. Therefore, um, 
Count it of the Lord's house. See? Let's continue. Verse 7. And all the places wherein I have walked with all the children of Israel, spake I a word with any of the tribes of Israel, whom I commanded to feed my people Israel, saying, Why build ye not me an house of cedar? Now therefore, so now therefore so shalt thou say unto my servant David, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I took thee from the sheep coat, from following the sheep, to be ruler over my people, over Israel. And I was with thee whithersoever thou wentest, and have cut off all thine enemies out of thy sight, and have made thee a great name, like unto the name of the great men that are in the earth. Moreover, I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, that they may dwell in a place of their own, and move no more. Neither shall the children of wickedness afflict them any more as before time. Now you think of, of that in context to today. Yes, Israel is planted in Israel. But do they have peace? Is not war constant in one way or another in Israel, around Israel? Verse 11. And since the time that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel, and have caused thee to rest from all thine enemies, also the Lord telleth thee that he will make thee in house. And when thy days be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. Making reference unto Solomon. But also, who is of the seed of David? Meaning the kingship, line of king. Oh, king of, Lord of Lords, King of Kings. Let's continue. He shall build an house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Now Solomon built a temple. Okay? And I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Um, Solomon's throne, okay? Solomon, as we all know, done messed up towards the latter end of his life. So when you look at verse 13, is that just relegated to Solomon? Come on. I know you get this. I know. Uh, 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 Fanny Crosby could see that. <laughs> Let's continue. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. If he commits iniquity, now referring now to Solomon, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men, but my mercy shall not depart away from him as I took it from Saul, whom I put away before thee. So the Lord is promising what? An heir of David. Partly fulfilled, yes, with Solomon. But it's a little bit more than just onto Solomon, isn't it? Isn't it? You know this, but we have to go through this. Okay? Now, let's, uh, let's refresh our memories. Verse 5. For there are set thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Thrones. The line of kings of David. Okay? Solomon and so on and so on with the line of the king of, of, of David. Okay? Now, go to 1 Chronicles chapter 28. 1 Chronicles chapter 28. 1 Chronicles chapter 28, verses 1 on to verse 10. 1 Chronicles chapter 28, verses 1 on to verse 10. And David assembled all the princes of Israel 
the princes of the tribes, and the captains of the companies that ministered to the king by course, and the captains over the thousands, and, cap and captains over the thousands, and captains over the hundreds, and the stewards over all the substance and possession of the king, and of his sons, with the officers, and with the mighty men, and with all the valiant men unto Jerusalem. Then David the king stood up upon his feet and said, Hear me, my brethren, and my people. As for me, I had in mine heart to build an house of rest for the ark of the covenant of the Lord, and for the footstool of our God, and had made ready for the building. But God said unto me, Thou shalt not build an house for my name, because thou hast been a man of war, and hast shed blood. How be it? The Lord God of Israel chose me before all the house of my father to be king over Israel forever. Okay? King over Israel forever. Now the line, the bloodline of David did reign over Israel. But see, our Lord Jesus Christ reigning as the son of David, uh, but David was not <laughs> the biological father of the Lord Jesus Christ. No, no, <laughs> no. Jesus is the Father, okay? See, Jesus ruling as the son of David, the king of the Jews, okay? That is what that means. When you see um, Jesus being referred to as the son of David, meaning in the line of kingship, the chosen king of Israel, the line of David, okay? That's what that means, okay? Okay, let's continue. <clears throat> Howbeit, verse 4, Howbeit the Lord God of Israel chose me before all the house of my father to be king over Israel forever. For he hath chosen Judah to be the ruler. And of the house of Judah, the house of my father, and among the sons of my father, he liked me to make me king over all Israel. God chooses. God chooses. And of all my sons, for the Lord hath given me many sons, he hath chosen Solomon, my son, to sit upon the throne of the kingdom of the Lord over Israel. And he said unto me, Solomon thy son, he shall build my house and my courts. For I have chosen him to be my son, and I will be his father. Moreover, I will establish his kingdom forever, if, conditional, if he be constant to do my commandments and my judgments as at this day. Now therefore, in the sight of all Israel, the congregation of the Lord, and in the audience of our God, keep and seek for all the commandments of the Lord your God, that ye may possess this good land and leave it for an inheritance for your children after you forever. See, it was conditional unto the children of Israel to remain in the land during the time of the kings. Okay? Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. That will come into play a little bit later. Verse 9. <clears throat> And thou, Solomon, my son, know thou the God of thy father, and serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind. For the Lord searcheth all hearts and understandeth all the imaginations of the thoughts. God knows everything. If thou seek him, he will be found of thee. But if thou forsake him, he will cast thee off forever. Take heed now. For the Lord hath chosen thee to build an house for the sanctuary. Be strong and do it. Okay, where are we? First Chronicles chapter 8. Okay, yes. Uh, chapter 28, yes. Take heed now, for the Lord hath chosen thee to build an house for the sanctuary. Be strong and do it. Now go to Isaiah. Go to Isaiah. Go to Isaiah chapter 11. Isaiah chapter 11. Again, 
Verse 5, For there are set thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 and verse 4. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. Roots as king. See, because the Lord said that David's going to be king forever. So our Lord Jesus Christ ruling as the son of David, king over the Jews forever. The Lord will rule forever over his chosen people, the Jews, Israel. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. He shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. And he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. But with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. And... Isaiah 33, Isaiah 33, verses 13 on to verse 24. Isaiah 33, verses 13 on to verse 34, 24, excuse me. Hear ye that are afar off what I have done. And ye that are near, acknowledge my might. The sinners in Zion are afraid. Fearfulness has surprised the hypocrites. Who among us shall dwell with the devouring fire? Who among us shall dwell with everlasting burnings? He that walketh righteously and speaketh uprightly. He that despiseth the gain of oppressions. That shaketh his hands from holding of bribes. That stoppeth his ears from hearing of blood. And shutteth his eyes from seeing evil. He shall dwell on high. His place of defense shall be the munitions of rocks. Bread shall be given him. His water shall be sure. Thine eyes shall see the king in his beauty. Talking about the second coming. They shall behold the land that is very far off. Thine heart shall meditate terror. Where is the scribe? Where is the receiver? Where is he that counted the towers? Thou shalt not see a fierce people, a people of a deeper speech than thou canst perceive, of a stammering tongue that thou canst not understand. Look upon Zion, the city of our solemnities. Zion, the city of our solemnities. Jude, uh, Jerusalem. Zion, Jerusalem, synonymous one with another. Mount Zion, okay? The mount which the Lord loved. Thine eyes shall see Jerusalem, a quiet habitation, a tabernacle that shall not be taken down. Verse 17, thine eyes shall see the king in his beauty. They shall behold the land that is very far off. Verse 20 again, look upon Zion, the city of our solemnity, solemnities, thine eyes shall see Jerusalem, don't you love when the scripture explains itself? I do too. A quiet habitation, a tabernacle that shall not be taken down. Not one of the stakes thereof shall ever be removed. Neither shall any of the cords thereof be broken. I ask you, is this fulfilled today, right here, right now? No. Is there true peace in Jerusalem right now? There might not be uh, any violence going on right now in Jerusalem right now. Is there? But in a broad sense, is there peace in Jerusalem? Something's missing for the peace of Jerusalem, isn't there? Oh, oh yeah, 
Let's continue. Let's continue. Okay? Let's continue. But there the glorious Lord will be unto us a place of broad rivers and streams, wherein shall go no galley with oars, neither shall gallant ships pass thereby. Now remember what we've already looked at about how they rejected the Lord and the Lord allowed them to have king and he chose David to rule over them forever? For the Lord is our judge, the Lord is our lawgiver, the Lord is our king, he will save us. Thy tacklings are loosed. They could not well strengthen their mast. They could not spread the sail. Then is the prey of a great spoil divided. The lame take the prey. And the inhabitants shall not say, I am sick. The people that dwell therein shall be forgiven their iniquity. Go to Zechariah. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't this beautiful? <laughs> Isn't this beautiful? I love it. I, I love it. Zechariah chapter 3. Zechariah chapter 3. Zechariah chapter 3. Can you handle this? Zechariah chapter 3. And he shewed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. And the Lord said unto Satan, The Lord rebuke thee, O Satan, even the Lord that hath chosen Jerusalem, flowing peace, rebuke thee. Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel, synonymous with Israel. Okay? Clothed with filthy garments. Their own garments. Their righteousnesses are as filthy rags. Get it? And he answered and spake unto him that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused thine iniquity to pass from thee, and I will clothe thee with a change of raiment. Oh, yeah. And I said, Let them set a fair mitre upon his head. So they set a fire mitre upon his head, and clothed him with garments. And the angel of the Lord stood by. And the angel of the Lord protested unto Joshua, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, If, Thou wilt walk in my ways, and if thou wilt keep my charge, then thou shalt also judge my house, and shalt also keep my courts, and I will give thee places to walk among these that stand by. Hear now, O Joshua, the high priest, thou and thy fellows that sit before thee, for they are men wondered at, for behold, I will bring forth my servant, the branch. Look at how that's all capital letters. For behold, the stone that I have laid before Joshua, the stone, a rock, no other foundation can any man lay than that which is laid. And that foundation is who? Jesus Christ. For behold, the stone that I have laid before Joshua, upon one stone shall be seven eyes. Behold, I will engrave the gravings thereof, said the Lord of hosts, and I will remove the iniquity of that land in one day. In that day, said the Lord of hosts, Shall ye call every man his neighbor under the vine and under the fig tree? Who is the vine? Oh, and who is the fig tree? Our Lord Jesus Christ is the vine. The fig tree, synonymous with Israel. Oh, you get it. I know you do. Isn't this beautiful? Isn't this beautiful? Okay. Zechariah chapter 6, verses 12 and 13. 
Zechariah chapter 6, verses 12 and 13. And speak unto him, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Behold, the man whose name is the branch, he shall grow up out of his place, and he shall build the temple of the Lord. Even he shall build the temple of the Lord, and he shall bear the glory, and shall sit and rule upon his throne, and he shall be a priest upon his throne, and the council of peace shall be between them both. Let's read that again. Verse 12, And speak unto him, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Behold, the man whose name is the branch, he shall grow up out of his place, and he shall build the temple of the Lord. Even he shall build the temple of the Lord, and he shall bear the glory, and shall sit and rule upon his throne, and he shall be a priest upon his throne. And the council of peace shall be between them both. Revelation chapter 5. Revelation chapter 5. Verse 5. Come on, fingers, work with me. Revelation 5, verse 5. Come on. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to lose the seven seals thereof. Now, when you read the scriptures, it is clear, you know, the Holy Ghost came upon Mary, and through the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that spirit, okay, she conceived. Joseph is not Jesus' daddy. No, 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 okay, no, no. Again, what does it say here? The root of David, meaning his kingship. Okay? I believe this has already been proven. Okay? Now, go to Revelation 22. Revelation chapter 22, verses 13, on to verse 16. Revelation chapter 22, verses 13, on to verse 16. I am Alpha and Omega. What does that mean? The beginning and the end the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to, to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. The fulfillment. Jesus Christ, God our Father, as King of the Jews. Okay? This is after, by the way, the kingdom of heaven, the thousand year reign. Okay? When Satan is after a thousand years is defeated and cast off into the lake of fire. Okay? For without our dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie, I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto thee, unto you these things in the churches. I am the root of and the offspring of David, and the bright and morning star. The bright and morning star. Okay. Through Mary, by the way. The, Mary, uh, the genealogy of Mary is in Luke, by the way. Okay. That's the genealogy of Mary. The genealogy of Joseph is in Matthew. Okay. The blood of God our Lord Jesus Christ, through Mary, okay? That doesn't mean she's the mother of God, you wicked Catholics. No, 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 okay? Okay? Remember, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, okay? Okay? He was born of Mary, okay? Yes, he was. Yes, he was. But Joseph was not his daddy, okay? And Mary is hardly the mother of God. Uh, within the authorized version of the scriptures... Jesus never referred to Mary as his mother, by the way. You keep that in memory, okay? But the point is, in verse 5 in Psalm 122, there, for there are set thrones 
of David. Okay, uh, excuse me. For there are set thrones of judgment, excuse me, the thrones of the house of David, okay? The lineage of his uh, descendants during the books of uh, First and Second Kings, okay? But ultimately fulfilled in the fulfillment of our Lord Jesus Christ, ruling and reigning from Jerusalem as king. The fulfillment of that, the promise he made to David, okay? And verse 6 in Psalm 122. Now here it is. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Okay? Now, right away you might be thinking like, oh, well, what about what he said unto Abraham? I will bless thee, uh, I will bless those who bless thee and curse those who curse thee. Let's look at that, okay? Go to Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12. Okay? Genesis chapter 12. Now, look at verse 6, okay? Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Love who? Jerusalem. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Okay, right now, is there peace in Jerusalem? In Jerusalem. They might have a day of peace, and amen. We should pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Because, brethren, when you look into the scriptures, okay, during the time of the kings, um, it has been nothing but war. Nothing but war, especially throughout the uh, Old Testament, okay? When you do the comparison, the times of war actually did outweigh the times of peace in correlation to Israel. When you do the study yourself, okay? They had more war than peace overall, okay? Why is that? Because they need God as their king. Right now, is there peace in Jerusalem? There might not be actual physical fighting going on, but uh, pretty much every day, there is some gunshots, some fighting, somewhere to do with Jerusalem. Why is that? Because that's where God has chosen to have his name. That is the city of the great king. We're going to be looking at that, okay? Jerusalem, not the Vatican, is the center of the world. Okay? That's why the Jesuits, Catholicism, Satan and his church, that's why they want Jerusalem. Because to imitate, to be a replacement, to be a fake. Okay? They want Jerusalem for that purpose. Because that's the city of the great king, where God our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, is going to rule and reign for a thousand years, the kingdom of heaven. Okay? We ought to fast for the peace of Jerusalem. Yes. But is there going to be peace in Jerusalem? Look at its track record, especially since 1948. <coughs> hmm? How many bombings? How many missiles and stuff like that? How many wars? How many sons of Israel? How many sons of Ishmael? How many people have died since alone 1948? We are to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And praying for the peace of Jerusalem, hopefully there will be peace in Jerusalem. But when will there be pure total peace in Jerusalem when their king is there. But, okay, looking at verse 6, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. They'll, they'll, some will say, well, that ties into the Abrahamic thing, right? Let's see. Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 and verse 3. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Abram, 
Get thee out of thy country, singular, and from thy kindred, bringing out, being separate, okay, and from thy father's house into a land that I will shew thee, and I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. Note the singularness here, okay? And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. In thee. Giving lineage unto our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay? Having the faith of Abraham. You know something though? Have you noticed? Who is the son unto? A man. He's talking to a man. Who? Abram. He's talking to a man. Singular. And when you go to Deuteronomy chapter 11, go to Deuteronomy, come on, Deuteronomy chapter 11. Okay, that was given on to a man, which transcends down onto our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Paul talks about that. All right? But in Deuteronomy chapter 11, verses 26 on to verse 28, okay? Verses 26 on to verse 28 in Deuteronomy chapter 11. Moses speaking on to whom? The children of Israel. Behold, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse. A blessing if ye obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day. And a curse, if ye will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God, but turn aside out of the way which I command you this day to go after other gods which ye have not known. That is made unto a nation. Well, what was given unto Abram to become Abraham was said unto him as a man personally. See, one was given unto a man, the other is given unto a nation. Okay? Unto Abram, he had faith on what the Lord God will do. Under the law. Okay? Having faith on what the Lord God will do, but you had to offer animal sacrifices for the blood, because it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. Okay? And God manifest in the flesh, but had not was not manifest yet, okay? He hadn't died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures, hardly during the time of the law, okay? So they had to have faith that the Lord would honor their sacrifice. See, faith and works. Where Abraham, he did as the Lord said, he had faith that the Lord will bless, will do what he said, okay? That's the difference. One was made unto a man, this is made unto a nation. So, in Genesis chapter 12, verse 1, on to verse 3, when it says right here, pray for the peace of Jerusalem, they shall prosper that love thee. Okay? How will Jerusalem have peace? When their king is there. When their king is there. Okay? Absolutely. They're different. One was said unto a man, the other is said unto a nation. Go to Psalm 48. Go to Psalm 48. I do pray that there may be peace in Jerusalem. I do. I do. But to pray for the peace of Jerusalem is to do what? Pray that the king come. And how will the king come? There are a few things that have to happen first, right? And ain't we getting closer to that time where the redemption of the purchased possession cometh? Psalm 48. Psalm 48. Okay, I lost my place. Okay. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in the mountain of his holiness. Beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion. On the sides of the north, the city of the great king. What, what city is that? Jerusalem. 
flowing peace. God is known in her palaces for a refuge. For lo, the kings were assembled. They passed by together. They sought, and so they marveled. They were troubled and hasted away. Fear took hold upon them there, and pain as of a woman in travail. Thou breakest the ships of Tarshish with an east wind. As we have heard, so have we seen in the city of the Lord of hosts, in the city of our God. God will establish it forever. Selah. We have thought of thy loving kindness, O God, in the midst of thy temple. According to thy name, O God, so is thy praise unto the ends of the earth. Thy righteousness, thy right hand is full of righteousness. Excuse me. Let Mount Zion rejoice. Let the daughters of Judah be glad because of thy judgments. Because the Lion of the tribe of Judah, our Lord Jesus Christ, the King of the Jews. Walk about Zion and go round about her. Tell the towers thereof. Mark ye well her bulwarks. Consider her palaces that ye may tell it to the generation following. For this God is our God forever and ever. He will be our guide, even unto death. Psalm 72. Psalm 72. Psalm 72. Now this is a song, this was for Solomon. Okay? But get this. Okay? Pray, verse 6, Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Psalm 72. Give the king thy judgments, O God, and thy righteousness unto the king's son. He shall judge thy people with righteousness, and thy poor with judgment. The mountain shall bring peace. The mountain shall bring peace to the people and the little hills by righteousness. And yes, there was peace during the time of Solomon. But when he, because he loved many strange women, women that were not of Israel, they turned away his heart to go worship other gods, and then God set up an adversary for King Solomon. Okay? The peace didn't last. But the peace will last. When the King, our Lord Jesus Christ, is down on the throne. <clears throat> Verse 4. He shall judge the poor of the people. He shall save the children of the needy. And shall break in pieces the oppressor. They shall fear thee as long as the sun and moon endure. Throughout all generations. He shall come down like rain upon mown grass. As the showers that water the earth. Talking about a second coming. In his days shall the righteous flourish. An abundance of peace so long as the moon endureth. He shall, he shall have dominion also from sea to sea and from the river unto the ends of the earth. He's going to rule all over all the earth. Okay? They that dwell in the wilderness shall bow before him and his enemies shall lick the dust. Very similar to the serpent, the curse of the serpent, who will go upon his belly and shall eat the dust all the days of his life. Get a load of that. Get a load of that. Okay? Shall lick the dust. Okay? Hold your place there. Okay? Hold your place there. Go to Genesis chapter 3. Okay? Go to Genesis chapter 3. That, note that. Note that. Come on, fingers. Work with me. Yes, the Episcopal, the epistle dedicatory. Very beautiful. If you ever get the chance to read that someday, read that, okay? Okay, Genesis chapter 3. Oh, thank you, Lord. Verse 14. Okay? Genesis chapter 3, verse 14. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, the serpent, the devil, Satan, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and thus shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Go back now to Psalm 42. Okay? Verse 9. They that dwell in the wilderness shall bow before him, and his enemies shall lick the dust. 
Because without our whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all those that loveth and maketh a lie. Verse 10. The kings of Tarshish and of the isle shall bring presents, and kings of Sheba, the kings of Sheba and Seba shall offer gifts. During the uh, kingdom of heaven, everybody's got to come to worship the Lord Jesus Christ and bring offerings. Uh, what is it? Uh, the uh, uh, Feast of Tabernacles, I believe it is. Okay? Yea, all kings shall fall down before him. All nations shall serve him. For he shall deliver the needy when he crieth, the poor also, and him that hath no helper. He shall spare the poor and needy, and shall save the souls of the needy. He shall redeem their soul from deceit and violence, and precious shall be their blood in his sight. And he shall live, and to him shall be given of the gold of Sheba. Prayer, look at that! Prayer also shall be made for him continually, and daily shall he be praised. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Ooh. Ooh, don't you love it? Let's continue. There shall be an handful of corn in the earth upon the top of the mountains. The fruit thereof shall shake like Lebanon. And they of the city shall flourish like grass of the earth. His name shall endure forever. His name shall be continued as long as the sun, as you went. And men shall be blessed in him. All nations shall call him blessed. Who? Blessed be the Lord God, the God of Israel, our Lord Jesus Christ, who only doeth wondrous things. Oh, I love this. <laughs> I love this. And blessed be his glorious name, Forever, for there is no name given among men under heaven by which by we must be saved. At the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Okay, they shall bow. Okay, and every tongue shall confess Jesus is Lord. Okay, yes. Oh, oh. Verse 18 again. Blessed be the Lord God the God of Israel, who only doeth wondrous things. And blessed be his glorious name forever. And let the whole earth be filled with his glory. Amen and amen. The prayers of David, the son of Jesse, are ended. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Don't you love that? Don't you love that? Now, now go to Psalm 102. Psalm 102. Psalm 102. True peace in Jerusalem is only truly going to come when the king is upon the throne. True peace. The peace of Jerusalem. The peace of Jerusalem. We pray for mercy, for our Lord's mercy. It is the city of the great king. His eye is always on Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Israel, is the center of the world, not Rome and the Vatican, okay? Jerusalem, Israel, that's why the Vatican wants Jerusalem. It's the city of the great king, okay? Okay? We pray, yes, Lord, have mercy on those who are in Jerusalem, upon Zion, Yes, Lord, have mercy upon your people. Yes, Lord, may today there be peace in Jerusalem. But we are to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Okay? Yes, pray that there be no violence, no death in Jerusalem today. Amen. Hallelujah. But to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And again, how will peace truly come to Jerusalem? When the king is there. Psalm 102. Psalm 102, verse, beginning at verse 12. And verses 1 on to verse 11 describe perfectly 
the Jews that are going to be going through the time of Jacob's trouble. But thou, O Lord, shalt endure forever, and thy remembrance unto all generations. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion. For the time to favor her, yea, the set time is come. The set time is come. Second coming. For thy servants take pleasure in her stones and favor the dust thereof. And hold your place right there. Psalm 137. Psalm 137. Verses 5 and 6. If I forget thee, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget her cunning. If I do not remember thee, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. If I prefer not Jerusalem above my chief joy. See, the Jew, they're going to, they're going to be called back onto Israel. Remember, in the Tanakh, in the Jewish scriptures, Okay, the way they have it organized, the last book of the Jewish Tanakh, okay, is Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles, the last book. And the very last thing they're told in the Jewish scriptures, the Tanakh, okay, which is set up differently than the scriptures, okay, which is set up differently than the Lord would have it set up because this is set up in accordance to the kingdom of heaven. Okay, well, what the Jews are holding to as their scriptures is arranged to tell them to go back to Israel. See, that's why if you're a Jew, here's your book, the authorized version of the scriptures, which is set up in accordance to the kingdom of heaven. This is what your God has chosen, the authorized version of the scripture, okay? This is your book. The authorized version of the scripture is a Jewish book, not a Gentile book given to us by the Vatican. No, no. This is a Jewish book. And if you are a Jew of Israel, you would do well to get the authorized version of the scriptures and your Tanakh which manuscripts trace back to what? Alexandria, Egypt? This is a Jewish book dear friend let's continue in Psalm 102 <clears throat> Picking up at verse 15. So the heathen shall fear the name of the Lord, and all the kings of the earth thy glory. When the Lord shall build up Zion, he shall appear in his glory. Second coming. Okay? He will regard the prayer of the destitute, and not despise their prayer. This shall be written for the generation to come, and the people which shall be created shall praise the Lord. Those... Uh, uh, time of Jacob troubles saints. Okay? For he hath looked down from the height of his sanctuary. From heaven did the Lord behold the earth to hear the groaning of the prisoner, to lose those that are appointed to death, to declare the name of the Lord in Zion and his praise in Jerusalem. When the people are gathered together and the kingdoms to serve the Lord, he weakened my strength in the way. He shortened my days. I said, oh my God, take me not away in the midst of my days. The years, thy years are throughout all generations. Of old thou hast laid the foundation of the earth. <laughs> I love that. And the heavens are the work of thy hands. They shall perish, but thou shalt endure. Yea, all of them shall wax old like a garment. As a vesture shalt thou change them, and they shall be changed. But thou art the same, and thy years shall have no end. 
The children of thy servant shall continue, and their seed shall be established before thee. See, Psalm 102, brethren, verses 1 on to verse 11. Yes, you can tie that in as I have, that verses 1 on to verse 11 in Psalm 102 kind of echo the Jew in the Holocaust. But during the time of Jacob's trouble, when Jewry will understand that we authorized scripture believers, okay, that we were the ones, okay, the authorized version of the scripture believers, that we were the ones who were telling them the truth. Not the Vatican, not the ones that hold to the Bibles. And the body of Christ, the Church of the Living God, is made up of both Jew and Gentile. Once they get it, they're going to be crying out from verses 1 on to 11. And once they get it, but thou, o Lord. See, isn't that beautiful? Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. And go to Hosea chapter 3. Now, I read this yesterday. Got to watch my time. Not that I'm really concerned about the time, but um, just to be honest with you, I'm actually enjoying this. <laughs> uh, Hosea chapter 3. Verses 4 on to verse 5. Now, I read this chapter in its entirety yesterday, and I even made mention about this today. But verses 4 and 5 in uh, Hosea chapter 4, uh, Hosea chapter 3. For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king and without a prince and without a sacrifice and without an image and without an ephod and without a teraphim. Afterward, okay, right now, does Israel have a king? A king, a, a, a physical king, one ruling upon a throne. Israel today as a nation, as a nation, not every individual Jew, okay? As a nation, Israel rejects their king, okay? Acts chapter 7 is where Israel as a nation rejected the gospel. Okay? That's why Acts chapter 7 is so important. Okay? Okay? That's when Israel rejected it. Okay? There are those of Israel who are saved of the church of the living God. But on a whole, Israel rejects their king. And today, okay, they do not have, they do not have a king, a prince, a sacrifice. <laughs> they might have an image, but they don't have an image, okay? They don't have an ephod or a teraphim. Okay? They do not. But see, after the redemption of the purchased possession, the son of perdition, that man of sin. He's going to come in offering that unto them and allow them to do what they want to do, to rebuild the third temple, the red heifer, and all the bringing back that of the Old Testament. And then midway through that, the son of perdition, who I believe is going to be looking like the Catholic depiction of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's like, oh, by the way, Verse 5. Afterwards shall they seek, afterwards shall the children of Israel return and seek the Lord their God and David their king and shall fear the Lord and his goodness in the latter days. The latter days reference on to the kingdom of heaven. Not what these wicked Catholic, Pentecatholics like to talk about the latter rain. The latter rain, is, latter rain is synonymous with the restoration of Israel. Okay? Okay? Now, now, we're not done yet. Oh, no, we, we hardly done. Okay? 
Go to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. Okay, the city of the great king. Okay, here's our Lord himself saying this. Matthew chapter 5, verses 33 and verse 35. Again, ye have heard that it hath been said by them of old time, Thou shalt not forswear thyself, but shalt perform unto the Lord thine oaths. But I say unto you, Swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Who is the great king? <laughs> Who is the great king? Go to John chapter 15. John chapter 15. Come on, fingers, work with me. John chapter 15, verse 5 is what we want. If my fingers would cooperate. It's kind of stuffy in here. I have the window closed because they're doing stuff out there. You needed to know that. John chapter 15, verse 5. Okay? Remember how we already looked at something that uh, made mention of this? John chapter 15, verse 5. I am the vine. Ye are the branches. Abide under his vine and of the fig tree. Oh, do you get it? Do you get it? Under his vine and under the fig tree. The king of the Jews, the fig tree, Israel. He is the vine. Ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. There will never be true peace in Jerusalem until their king is there. There will never be true lasting peace in Jerusalem. Until their king is there. It's not going to happen. And the Lord has said it so. There will be uh, little brackets of peace. Like when you search the scriptures on this. But there's always a recurring war. War, peace, war, peace, war, peace. Okay? It wasn't a constant. Until the Lord come. And establish the kingdom of heaven. There will be peace for a thousand years. Then Satan is going to be loosed. Okay? Satan will be loosed. And then Satan will be destroyed and done away with. And then eternity, the seventh and final dispensation, okay, is eternity. The new heavens and the new earth. Okay? Peace will only come to Jerusalem. To you, the Jew. The only way that's going to come is when you embrace your king. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Prosper that love thee, okay? Go to Romans chapter 11. Romans chapter 11, verses 18 on to verse 32, okay? 18 on to verse 32 in Romans chapter 11. The, the danger of being replacement theology, like Catholics are. Being anti-Shemitic, okay? It's Shem, not Sem. Anti-Shemitic, okay? Um, th there are people out there who like to say that the Jews rule the world. It's the Jesuits! It's Catholicism, okay? It's not the Jews, okay? Yes, there are Jews stupidly, that work for the Vatican, unfortunately. Yes, there are Jews that have betrayed their own people and work for the whore. Mystery Babylon, Roman Catholicism, yes. There are. But it's not the Jews. It's the Jesuits. Roman Catholicism, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. It's Rome, not Israel, that is in control of the earth, okay? 
And and, and the, 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 the dumbest thing is, there are people out there who, of course, call themselves Christians and hate the Jews. Come here, come here. Uh, come here, come here. Put your, put your ear right here. Uh, salvation is of the Jews. Jesus Christ is the king of the Jews. <laughs> this is a Jewish book. You know, if someone calling themselves a Christian and they hate the Jews, <laughs> I know of one choice individual who, when you scratch him just a little bit, his hatred for the Jews comes out quite readily. Okay? You hate the Jews and you're calling yourself a Christian? <laughs> How someone truly feels about the Jew is a good temperature gauge of what you are dealing with as well. Boast not, your, boast not against the branches, but if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. Thou wilt say then, the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. <laughs> well, because of unbelief were they, they were broken off. And thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. For if God spared not the natural branches, the Jews, take heed lest he spare not thee. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God on them which fell severity. But toward thee, goodness, if thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shalt be cut off. Now, does this mean, uh, does this talk against eternal security? I don't know. I know and believe and preach and teach eternal security, okay? When you are saved, you cannot become unsaved. What does that talk about specifically? About being cut off? I don't know. I don't know. Scriptures say that he cannot deny himself. Okay? If we deny him, he will deny us. Uh, what a, a really good way to deny the Lord Jesus Christ is to be anti-Semitic. To be replacement theology. And if you're of the church of the living God and you have any of that in you, oh, oh, See, we, I, eternal security. Once saved, always saved. Yes. Does this talk against eternal security? I don't know. I don't know. I do believe what the scriptures say, of course. Eternal security. Once saved, always saved. You cannot become unsaved. But another thing I do know. Okay. Okay. Pick your pardon. The Lord has used me to bring the gospel into the Jewish people. He has. I have quite a bit of experience with it. It is not good for you of the church of the living God to be anti-Semitic in any way, shape, or form. Okay? It's, it's not good for you to be against God, the apple of God's eye. It ain't a good thing. Actually, it's very bad. Let's continue. And they also, if they abide not still, in verse 23, still in unbelief, shall be grafted in. For God is able to graft them in again. For if thou wert cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and were grafted in, contrary into a good olive tree, how much more shall these, which be the natural branches, the Jews, be grafted into their own olive tree? See, we, the Gentile, were grafted in to make them jealous. And if you're Jewish, you tell me you're jealous of what you see, which is purported to be Christian today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Why do you think I'm so um, adamant about removing Christian from our vocabulary? Church of the living God. 
For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles become in. And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written, There shall come out of Zion the Deliverer, and shall take away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes, but as touching the election, meaning the apple of his eye, okay, they are beloved for the father's sakes. Fathers, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Verse 29. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. The Jew is the apple of God's eye. The Jew is the apple of God's eye. Okay? We were grafted into their tree. They are the enemies of the gospel for our sake. Okay? And Romans 11, verse 11. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid. But rather through their fall, salvation has come unto the Gentiles to provoke them to jealousy. See, the Jew is to see their God working in the church of the living God. Do you really think that the Jew sees their God in the church buildings? And Kenneth Copeland in the Catholics? See, that's the method to my madness, dear brethren, about you get Christian out of your vocabulary. It's what they called us. We never called ourselves that. Okay? Is it a sin for you to do so? No. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. But the distinction in these last days, you know, we're to be separate, different. Okay? Now, verse 7. In Psalm 122. Peace be within thy walls and prosperity within thy palaces. Isaiah chapter 9. Isaiah chapter 9. Again, the only way peace is ever going to truly be in Israel, Jerusalem, is when their king is there. Isaiah chapter 9. Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. On to verse 7. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful. Counselor. The Mighty God. The Everlasting Father. The Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Is there peace in Jerusalem today? Has there been a long withstanding period of peace in Jerusalem, Israel, for a thousand years? No. No. How will this peace come when their king is in Jerusalem? We are to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And in praying for the peace of Jerusalem, may there be peace in Jerusalem. See? Verse 7 again. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it, and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. And Isaiah chapter 11 again. 
verses 5 on to verse 16. See how he did that? Huh? See that? Isaiah chapter 11, <laughs> verses 5 on to the close of the chapter now. See that? <laughs> And righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins, and faithfulness the girdle of his reins. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb. You tell me that's happened today. And throughout Israel's history. Not yet. And the leopard shall lie down with the kid. And the calf and the young lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. It's true peace. And the cow and the bear shall feed, their young ones shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox, and the sucking child shall play on the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the cockatrice den. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain. For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Yeah, when the Lord come back, <laughs> there's, yeah, there's gonna, not going to be any doubt. Obviously. 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 And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign of all the people. Uh, and which shall stand for an ensign of the people. Excuse me. It shall, to it shall the Gentiles seek, and his rest shall be glorious. And it shall come to pass in that day, that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria, and from Egypt, and from Pathros, and from Cush, and from Elam, and from Shinar, and from Hamath, and from the islands of the sea. Second time? And he shall set up an ensign for the nations and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. The, en the envy also of Ephraim shall depart and the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Ephraim shall not envy Judah and Judah shall not vex Ephraim. And they shall fly upon the shoulders of the Philistines toward the west. They shall spoil them to the, of the east together. They shall, lay, they shall lay their hand upon Edom and Moab, and the children of Ammon shall obey him. The fulfillment of the kingdom of heaven, when true peace will be not only in Jerusalem, but finally be on this earth. And the Lord shall utterly destroy the tongue of the Egyptian sea. And with his mighty wind shall he shake his hand over the river and shall smite it in the seven streams and make men go over dry shod. And there shall be an highway for the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria, like as it was to Israel in the day that he came up out of the land of Egypt. That remnant that's going to make it through the time of Jacob's trouble. You see? Isn't this beautiful? <laughs> I just, I'm loving this. I'm loving this. Go to Luke chapter 1. We're almost done. We're almost done. Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. Come on, come on. Luke chapter 1, verses 31 on to verse 33. Luke chapter 1, verses 31 on to verse 33. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and, his, and of his kingdom there shall be no and let's read verse 35. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which 
shall be born of thee, shall be called the Son of God. Joseph was not Jesus. Jesus is daddy. Okay. Look at verse 35 or 33. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Second coming, a thousand years of peace. And of his kingdom there will be no end. Verse 8 in Psalm 122. For my brethren and companions' sake, I will now say, Peace be within thee. For my brethren and companions' sake, I will now say, Peace be within thee. Remember, salvation is of the Jews. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. Okay? Jesus is Jewish. And those who are his brethren are the ones who do the will of his Father. Okay? And Jesus is the Father. Okay? One and the same. Soul of the Godhead. The Father. Okay? Spirit, soul, and body. The Holy Ghost is the Spirit. God the Father is the soul. Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, is the body. Okay? For my brethren and companions' sake, I will now say, Peace be within thee. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Got to keep an eye on the time there now. We're almost done though. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Verses 27 on to verse 43. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 27 on to verse 43. Were it not that I feared the wrath of the enemy, lest their adversaries should behave themselves strangely, and lest they should say, Our hand is high, and the Lord hath not done all this. That ought to be very self-explanatory. The Lord is afraid of nothing, but someone could say the Lord had, didn't let me. Uh, the Lord didn't allow me to do this. I did this of my own hand. Hence, boasting themselves in a in a way saying like the Lord didn't allow this to happen. I did it all by myself. That's what that's talking about. That ought to be very self-explanatory. Okay, Lord, the Lord fears nothing. But see, they can boast themselves and say, the Lord didn't allow that to happen. I did it all by myself. We'll see this. Verse 28. For they are a nation void of counsel. Neither is there any understanding in them. Oh, that they were wise, feared the Lord, that they, should under, that they understood this, departing from evil, that they would consider their latter end. Here, verse 30 is going to explain verse 20. How should one chase a thousand and two put ten thousand to flight except their capital R, Rock, had sold them and the Lord had shut them up? See, Rock, don't look at me. Look at the, see Rock, Lord, Rock, Lord, Lord, Rock, Lord, Rock. Yeah, our Lord Jesus Christ upon this Rock himself. For their Rock, lowercase r, is not as our Rock, capital R, rock. Even our enemies themselves being judges. For their vine is of the vine of Sodom and the fields of Gomorrah. Their grapes are grapes of gall. Their clusters are bitter. Their wine is the poison of dragons and the cruel venom of asps. Their wine? Oh, beg your pardon. Is not this laid up in store with me and sealed up among my treasures? To me belongeth vengeance and recompense. Their foot shall slide in due time. In due time. Their foot shall slide, brethren. For the day of their calamity is at hand, and the things that shall come upon them make haste. For the Lord shall judge his people and repent himself for his servants. When he seeth that their power is gone, and there is none shut up or left. For my brethren and companions' sake, will I now say, Peace be within thee. Verse 8 in Psalm 122. Back to Deuteronomy 32. Verse 37. 
and he shall say, Where are their gods, their, lowercase r, rock in, which, in whom they trusted, which did eat the fat of their sacrifices and drank the wine of their drink offerings? Let them rise up and help you and be your protection. If you happen to be Jewish and you are doing anything in accordance with Roman Catholicism, the Vatican, you know, you're a Mason or something like that, you're stupid. I'm sorry. You're just plain stupid. And you're an idiot. If you're Jewish and yoking yourself up with the Vatican, Verse 30, see now that I, even I am he, and there is no God with me. I kill, I make alive, I wound, I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. For I lift up my hand to heaven and say, I live forever. If I whet my glittering sword and mine hand take hold on judgment, I will render vengeance to mine enemies and will reward them that hate me. What are we reading to? 43. I will make mine arrows drunk with blood, and my sword shall devour flesh, and that with the blood of the slain and of the captives, from the beginning of revenges upon the enemy. Rejoice, O ye nations, with his people, for he will avenge the blood of his servants, and will render vengeance to his adversaries, and will be merciful unto his land and to his people. Go to Ezekiel chapter 36. Ezekiel chapter 36. Oh, it's really getting warm in here. <laughs> I might have to pause this and open this window. Ezekiel chapter 36. Ezekiel chapter 36. Verses 22 on to verse 38. In Ezekiel chapter 36. Therefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, I do not this for your sake, O house of Israel, but for mine holy name's sake, which ye have profaned among the heathen, whither ye went. How the Lord Jesus Christ died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Verse 8, For my brethren and companions' sake, I will now say, Peace be within thee. And it was to the Jew first and also to the Greek. We already looked in Romans chapter 11 about how we were grafted into their tree to make them jealous. Let's continue. And I will sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the heathen, which ye have profaned in the midst of them. And the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, saith the Lord God, when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. For I will take you from among the heathen, and gather you out of all countries, and will bring you into your own land. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you. Okay? He brought, you know, uh, Israel was made a nation in 1948. That part was fulfilled. What about this stuff? Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness, and from all your idols which I cleanse you, will I cleanse you. Has that happened today? But, no. It's to come yet. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you an heart of flesh. Now this can happen, you know, individually. He, Someone is saved by our Lord Jesus Christ of the church and the living God. Okay? Yes, you are born again, saved, converted. But nationally, his people, has this happened? And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and ye shall keep my judgments and do them. And ye shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers and ye shall be my people and I will be your God. Has this been fulfilled in its fulfillment today? Of course not. 
I will also save you from your from all your uncleanness, and I will call for the corn and will increase it and lay no famine upon you. And I will multiply the fruit of the tree and the increase of the field, that ye shall receive no more reproach of famine among the heathen. Then shall ye remember your own evil ways and your doings that were not good, and ye shall loathe yourselves in your own sight for your iniquities and your and for your abominations. Not for your sakes do I this, saith the Lord God. Be it known unto you. Be ashamed and confounded for your own ways, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord God, In the day that I shall have cleansed you from all your iniquities, I will also cause you to dwell in the cities, and in the way and the wastes shall be builded, and the desolate land shall be tilled, whereas it lay desolate in the sight of all that pass, passed by. In the kingdom of heaven, it's going to be a farming, agricultural um, society. Okay, farming, agriculture, what is it called? Um, agrarian um, culture or something like that. One of you correct me on that about the pronunciation. But it's going to be farming, tilling the land during the kingdom of heaven. It's not going to be this stuff. It's not going to be fancy schmancy cell phones. It's going to be going back to the old way. Farming and stuff like that. Kingdom of heaven, you're going to be a farmer, man. And they shall say, this land that was desolate is become like the Garden of Eden. And the waste and desolate and ruined cities are become fenced and are inhabited. Then the heathen that are left round about you shall know that I, the Lord, build the ruined places and plant that that was desolate. I, the Lord, have spoken it, and I will do it. it hasn't happened yet. It's coming. Thus saith the Lord God, I will yet for this be inquired of by the house of Israel to do it for them. I will increase them with men like a flock as the holy flock, as the flock of Jerusalem, flowing peace, and her solemn feasts, so shall the waste cities be filled with flocks of men, and they shall know that I am the Lord. <laughs> and finally, verse 9. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Deuteronomy chapter 7. Deuteronomy chapter 7. We're almost done. When the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land whither thou goest to possess it, and hath cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites, and the Girgashites, and the Amorites, and the Canaanites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than thou. And when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them, and utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor shew mercy unto them. And they did that, didn't they? As the Lord knew, as it talks about that, they would. Neither shalt thou make marriages with them, neither... Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter shalt thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. Why? For they will turn away thy son from following me, that they may serve other gods. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy thee suddenly. And look at what happened to King Solomon when he went outside of his kindred. God is a God of distinction, remember. He likes separation. He likes variety. Remember that. That's what God has designed. But this, but thus shall ye deal with them. 
You shall destroy their altars and break down their images and cut down their groves and burn their graven images with fire. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God, separate. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Talking about, who is he addressing here? The Jews. Okay? The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because ye were more in number than any people, for ye were the fewest of all people. But because, because the Lord loved you, and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, hath the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand, and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen, and from the, and, uh, the house of bondmen, from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations, and repayeth them that hate him to their face to destroy them. He will not be slack to him that hateth him. He will repay him to his face. Thou shalt keep therefore, thou shalt therefore, excuse me, Keep the commandments and the statutes and the judgments which I command thee this day to do them. Now, during the time of the kingdom of heaven, it's all works. Because you're going to be able to see the Lord Jesus Christ. Faith is not involved when you can see the king on his throne. Okay? Think about this, what we're reading in Deuteronomy chapter 7, by the way. They failed it. They blew it. They did. Again, the only way there's going to be true peace in Jerusalem, when the peace of Jerusalem is there. And who is that? Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. We are to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Wherefore it shall come to pass, if ye hearken to these judgments and keep them and do them, that the Lord thy God shall keep unto thee the covenant and the mercy which he sware unto thy fathers. And he will love thee and bless thee and multiply thee. He will also bless, bless the fruit of thy womb and the fruit of thy land, thy corn and thy wine and thine oil and the increase of thy kind and the flocks of thy sheep in the land which he sware unto thy fathers to give thee. Thou shalt be blessed above all people. There shall not be male or female barren among you or among your cattle. And the Lord will take away from thee all sickness and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt which thou knowest upon thee, but will lay them upon all them that hate thee. Being said unto a nation, not unto a man. This is being said unto a nation, And thou shalt consume all the people which the Lord thy God shall deliver thee. Thine eyes shall have no pity upon them, neither shalt thou serve their gods, for that will be a snare unto thee. And look at Israel today. With their Kabbalah. Look at Christendom today. If thou shalt say in thine heart, These nations are more than I, how can I dispossess them? Thou shalt not be afraid of them, but shalt, remember, shalt well remember what the Lord thy God did unto Pharaoh and unto Egypt. Remember for our instruction in righteousness, Pharaoh, Satan, Egypt, the world. The great temptations which thine eyes saw, and the signs and the wonders and the mighty hand, and the stretched out arm, whereby the Lord thy God brought thee out, so shall the Lord thy God do unto all the people of whom thou art afraid. Because the Jews require a sign. Oh, what will happen when the fulfillment of the Jew, what will be the fulfilling of them? Unfortunately, we are not going to see that in this dispensation. But we will. 
those of us who are saved, born again, of the church of the living God. Moreover, the Lord thy God will send the hornet among them, until they that are left, until they that are left, and hide themselves from thee, be destroyed. Thou shalt not be affrighted at them. For the Lord thy God is among you, a mighty God and terrible. Among you, a mighty God and terrible. Is the Lord among them right now? Is he for Israel or against Israel? They are the apple of his eye, but they reject him. Hence the time of Jacob's trouble. Then, during that time, then, before it's too late, Israel will be saved as a nation. And the Lord thy God will put out those nations before thee by little and little. Thou mayest not consume them at once, lest the beasts of the field increase upon thee. But the Lord thy God shall deliver them unto thee, and shall destroy them with a mighty destruction until they be destroyed. And he shall deliver their kings into thine hand, and thou shalt destroy their name from under heaven. There shall no man be able to stand before thee until thou have destroyed them. The graven images of their gods shall ye burn with fire. Thou shalt not desire the silver or gold that is on them, nor take it unto thee, lest thou be snared therein. For it is an abomination to the Lord thy God. Neither shalt thou bring an abomination into thine house, lest thou be a cursed thing like it. But thou shalt utterly detest it, and thou shalt utterly abhor it, for it is a cursed thing. Oh, thank you, Mark. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. And Revelation chapter 22. Revelation chapter 22. Then we'll, we'll be done. And he shewed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. And they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. And there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun. For the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign for ever and ever. And he said unto me, These sayings are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to shew unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. And I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when, I, and when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which shewed me these things. This is one of us, okay? This is one of us, these, this angel. We are likened unto angels, okay? This is one of us. Then saith he unto me, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren the prophets, and of them which keep the saying of this book, sayings of this book, worship God. And he saith unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. He which is filthy, let him be filthy still. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, Separate, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me. To every man, to give every man according as his works shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments that they may have right to the tree of life 
and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. And the spirit and the bride, the bride, say, Come! And let him that heareth say, Come! And let him that is a thirst, Come! And whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, and isn't it interesting to note that uh, from the Alexandrian line of manuscripts, all the Bibles, that Revelation is the most messed with book that there is in the New Testament? Isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting? That's why you want the authorized version of the scriptures. God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. He which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. I, lo I love the scriptures. <laughs> so, true peace will only come when the king is reigning upon the throne. We are to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Pray and fast for the peace of Jerusalem, yes. And praying for the peace of Jerusalem, may there be peace in Jerusalem. Because right now, war is going on. Uh, you know, you can you can look it up for yourself. May our Lord have mercy upon Israel, upon Jerusalem. But you, when you look into the history of it and look at what's coming. Especially in Matthew chapter 24. The only way true peace is going to be in Jerusalem is when Jesus Christ is there. Should we, pay, should we pray and fast for the peace of Jerusalem? Yes. Because the peace of Jerusalem, there will be peace in Jerusalem. Let us pray for the peace of Jerusalem. What has to happen before the, the peace of Jerusalem comes? The redemption of the purchased possession and the time of Jacob's trouble. So if we are to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, what two things at least have to happen first? Catching up. I'm Jacob's trouble. May those of the Jew in Israel come to the true faith of their fathers and believe on their King, their Lord, our Father, Jesus Christ. And praying for the peace of Jerusalem. May there be peace in Jerusalem. Like we pray. It's like, today, Lord, can there be one 24-hour period in Jerusalem, where no one gets killed. Yes, and, f and fast for that, yes. Yes, yes. But remember, we are to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And in praying for the peace of Jerusalem, there will be peace in Jerusalem. So. Anyway, uh, thank you, brother, who unknowingly stirred this... Um, this video, uh, I, I actually enjoyed um, doing this. <laughs> I did. Um, I really did. 
may this help some of you. Um, may our Lord be glorified. May our Lord be glorified. That's all that matters. But uh, thank you so much for watching this and enduring this. If you do, I hope you do. Uh, like I said, this was, um, I learned quite a bit of things myself in uh, being led to do this and uh, going through all this stuff, you know. And, and very quickly, very quickly, there is one thing I, I forgot. There is one thing I forgot to mention. There is one thing I forgot to mention. Go to Luke chapter 9, uh, 18. Luke chapter 18. Then, then we'll be done. I'm hungry. It's hot in here. Got to upload this. It's going to take a long time for this to upload. But uh, Luke chapter 18. Verses 1 on to verse 9. One, uh, 1 on to verse 8. Excuse me. Luke chapter 18. Verses 1 on to verse 8. And he spake a parable unto them. To this end. That men ought always to pray and not to faint. Saying, there was, a, in a, there was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. Feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city. And she came unto him saying, avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while. But afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continually, continual coming she weary, weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith. Now if an unjust judge will be wearied by a widow coming to him asking for vengeance upon the adversary of the widow, unto a guy, unto a judge who feared not God, neither had regard for man. Hear what the unjust judge saith. Verse 7. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. That's it. <laughs> Thank you so much, brethren. Um, brethren, pray for uh, one another. Keep one another in prayer for the, for these these times this these days. Continue to pray for one another. Keep yourself grounded and rooted in the scriptures, because who knows when we're going to hear come up hither. Anyway, thank you for watching this. If you do, may our Lord Jesus Christ be magnified and. Um, Thank you, we love you, and we will see you in the next video.